Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number two from um, the October November 2018 Pure Mathematics P1 Cambridge 9709 paper. This is paper one, variant three. And this is also question number eight from my endotopic worksheet, number 11, differentiation one. And here we've got a question which is telling us about function, which is defined by f of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 7. Okay, and they've told this function is defined for x is greater than or equal to negative 2. We've got to determine showing all necessary working, whether function f is an increasing function, a decreasing function, or neither. So a function is considered increasing um, when for all the values that it has for x, it will be uh, a function that's always got a positive gradient. So if this function, this x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 7, has a positive gradient for all the values of x which are greater than negative 2, then it will be considered a, an increasing function. Okay, and it's considered a decreasing function where all the value, all the, the gradient of this function for all the values of x for which it is defined is negative. If the gradient of this function is negative for all the values of x which are greater than or equal to negative 2, then it will be considered a, a decreasing function. And if it is increasing for some, some uh, you know, values of x and decreasing for other values of x within its range, within, within, its, within its domain, sorry, then it would be a function which is neither increasing nor decreasing, because sometimes it's increasing, sometimes it's decreasing, so neither is, is it called an increasing function, nor is it called a decreasing function. It's neither, because an increasing function is one that has always got a positive gradient, a decreasing function is one that always got an, an, a, 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 a function which, uh, d uh, sorry, a, a gradient which is negative. So an increasing function will have always a positive gradient, a decreasing one will always have a negative gradient, and neither will have some values of, of its domain will be um, positive gradients and some will be negative. Okay, so what we have to do here is we have to focus on the gradient of this function, and the gradient function is found by differentiating. So that's one of the reasons why this is under the topic of differentiation. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to find the derivative or the derivative the gradient function. When you, di when you differentiate something, it's called finding the gradient function. Okay, it's very important for us to understand that because that's going to help us understand why we're differentiating. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to differentiate this function, which is differentiated by multiplying by the power, taking one from the power. Multiplying by the power, so 4x to the power of 1, the x term, the x is dropped, the constant term becomes 0. So this here, this expression here, tells us the gradient of this function Okay, for all the values for which it is valid. So this is only valid for x values which are greater than or equal to negative 2 because that's how they have defined the function. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see um, I'm going to see what you know what values of x for which this this grade this this function is positive and for what great values of x is negative. So I'm going to try to make a sketch of this function. I'm going to start trying to make a sketch of the gradient of this function. I'm going to see what happens to this gradient, okay, what the value of this gradient is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch, I'm going to sketch the gradient function. So to see where is, it a, where is it a positive gradient, where is a negative gradient. So this is one way of doing this question, sketch the gradient function. There's other ways as well, um, which are possible. But this is in general uh, what we're going to do. We're going to sketch the gradient function. So what I'll do here is I will... Um, try to first of all find where does this equal zero. So I want to find where does this gradient function, equal, where does the gradient become zero. So you're going to do 3x squared plus 4x minus 4 equals zero. I'm going to try to factorize this. Um, let's see if it does factorize. I'm going to use my little window method that I like using. Somebody was asking about it on the on the uh, on the channel the other day. So it should be a bit lower. Okay, now, I'll just explain it in a bit more detail because somebody was asking about it. So basically, um, what you do is, you these two um, squares or spaces here, top left and bottom right, you put in these two values, 3x squared and the constant term. The x squared and the constant term goes in those two. And then you multiply those two terms together, which gives us a product of negative 12x squared. 
All right, so I know that these two, these two boxes, whatever goes in there, must give, out that, give me the same product of minus 12x squared. However, the sum must be the same as the middle term here. So the sum has to be 4x squared. So two numbers multiplied together to give me negative 12x squared. But when I add them together, I get 4x squared. Well, if I multiply them together and I get a negative number, then one of them has to be positive and the other one has to be negative. Okay. And if I multiply them together, I get 12. They could be 12 and 1. They could be 6 and 2. And that looks like the 1. Because if I have 6x and 2x and negative 2x, when I add them together, I get uh, this 4x, not 4x squared, sorry. I should say 4x. So they, they add together to give us this middle term. I should say 4x. I wrote squared by, for some reason. So when I add these together, I'm going to get 4x. And when I multiply them, I'm going to get mi minus 12x squared. So I know I have to have a positive 6x and a negative 2x in these spaces. And then it's very simple after that. I just take, I choose a row or a column and I look for the highest common factor. So for example, these two terms, the highest common factor is x. I'm going to write that over there. Outside that row goes the high com high, highest common factor. And the rest is really pretty easy because it's like this square here, or this rectangle here, this, this has an area of 3x squared. This part is x, that part must be 3x. So 3x times x gives us 3x squared. And this part here, if this part is x, this is x, this must be minus 2, because I'm going to get x times minus 2 is minus 2x. And 3x times something here gives me plus 2x, plus 6x, sorry, that's going to be plus 2. Okay, so 3x times 2 gives me 6x. So I'm, I'm left with 3x minus 2 in one bracket and x plus 2 in the other bracket equals 0. And you can check 3x squared plus 6x minus 2x. That's going to give us plus 4x and minus 4. That works. So either 3x minus 2 is 0 or x plus 2 is 0. So that means x is going to be 2 divided by 3 or x is going to be negative 2. So those are the two places where the gradient is going to equal zero. But the gradient function looks like this. The gradient function has this quadratic type of shape. So I'm going to make a sketch here. And the sketch is not of my original function. It is of my gradient function. This is the sketch of the gradient function. And we can see here that it cuts the x-axis at minus 2. So I'm going to draw it like this, minus 2 and 2 thirds. So what I'll do is, as I, as I explained, I won't draw the axis first. I'm going to draw my quadratic first. I'll make a sketch of my quadratic first. That's always easier without any pressure of making it fit through anything. So I've got my quadratic shape here. Okay, and then I'm going to draw my x-axis. I know that this thing cuts the x-axis in two places. Okay, at minus two and two thirds. So I'm just going to draw my x-axis. And I know that this is minus two. And this is two thirds. So the y-axis must be somewhere over here, closer to two thirds and minus two. Okay, but before it, because that's where x is 0. So that's going to be my y-axis. That's going to be the y-intercept, which is minus 4 for the... This is Remember, this is the gradient function. This is not the actual function itself. This is the gradient function, and this is x. So this is the, the value of the gradient. So we can see the gradient is equal to 0 in these two points. That would represent on this curve the place where it turns. Okay, so it's going to turn. This curve will have this type of shape, the cubic curve. It'll have this type of shape. It'll turn at minus 2 and it'll turn at 2 thirds. Okay, so it's going to have a gradient of 0 at, two, at minus 2 and also at 2 thirds. Okay, so I guess we can answer our question now. When x is greater than minus 2, it's going to have a negative gradient and then it's going to become 0, then it's going to become positive. So this is neither because we can see the gradient, the value of the gradient is negative. When x is greater than negative 2, it stays negative. But then it becomes 0, the value of the gradient is 0 at 2 thirds, where the actual cubic curve will turn. And then the gradient becomes positive after 2 thirds. Okay, so we can see here that we can say f dash of x is less than 0 when x is between negative 2 and 2 thirds. But then f dash of x is greater than 0 when x is greater than 2 thirds, therefore we can say f of x is neither, is neither increasing nor decreasing. You can't call it increasing, neither can you call it decreasing, because it's basically for some, some, some of its domain, because the domain of this function only starts from 
x is greater than negative 2. So in fact, if I make a sketch of it, I should really get rid of this part, right? It says x is greater than or equal to. So it starts from here with a closed circle. The gradient and this will start from here. It starts from the turning point. That's how the graph would start. This is the actual function, and this is the gradient function. This tells you what the, the, the shape of the actual function is, and this tells you the, the gradient function, its value is negative between minus 2 and 2 thirds and positive after 2 thirds, and it's 0 at minus 2 and 2 thirds. Okay, so f of x is neither increasing nor decreasing because um, it has to be just one of the, an either increasing the whole time or decreasing the whole time. So, for example, if the question said, uh, for x is less than minus 2, if the equation was x is less than minus 2, then you would say uh, it's always increasing because when x is less than that negative 2, the gradient will always be a positive gradient. It would be like if it would be from here. Always be positive until that point. The gradient would be positive. As you can see, the value of the gradient would be a positive value. This tells you the value of the gradient. This tells you the actual shape of the curve itself. All right, but the question doesn't say that. It says greater than or equal to. So here, as you can see, for some parts, it's um, it's going to be decreasing. Some parts it's increasing. Some parts the gradient is negative. Some parts the gradient is positive. X is greater than negative two. Okay, so that um, answers question number two. I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this particular paper, October November 2018, can be found. Uh, this is a variant three. Can be found in the playlist over here. It's for the Cambridge CIE, CAIE 9709, um, you know, October, November 2018, paper 13. Um, other questions from this particular worksheet, worksheet number 11 on differentiation 1, can be found in the playlist over here. You can um, watch other questions in general about differentiation from my P1 of um, Cambridge in the playlist in this section over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.